Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Tofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where this week we're talking about the new cards added in the Way of the Witcher expansion. Today, we're gonna look at the Northern Realms faction because it's the last faction that we haven't talked about just yet. So, tomorrow we'll be talking about the neutral cards, but today it's Northern Realms, and they've got some very interesting additions. So last time we were talking about the Viper School Witchers and today Northern Realms actually got the Griffin School of Witchers and they basically got their own archetype. It's really, really cool um, and I've seen this being used in very creative ways so far. So let's go through them from the lowest to the top and uh, discuss these cards. So the first up is, of course, as with the other Witcher Schools, the Adept, the uh, student uh, gains a shield at the start and this is very interesting. It's basically creating its own archetype. On order, transform an allied Witcher into a base copy of Griffin Witcher Adept. So basically allowing you to change the, um, the students, the two power students into four power adepts, also with a shield and also with an order ability allowing you to do this again. So basically giving you a chain of changing students into Witcher school adepts. And um, the interesting thing about this is that they also have a shield, so you can use uh, King Bruegner to destroy all those shields at the end and giving you a huge boost in power. Uh, you also see the Mantor in the back, which is uh, very funny because of course we're going to be talking about him in a second. But the next one is, I think it's the only faction that got a 4 provision special card. So target practice is a warfare card. You boost an allied unit by 4 and if there's a Witcher on the boosted unit's row, you also spawn a Witcher student on that row, giving you more for the Adept to transform into more Adept. Which is, yeah, even story-wise very fitting, so the adepts just uh, caused students to become better and turn into an adept. Then the next one is the ranger, so uh, the guy that is uh, tracking, of course, probably a griffin, because that's where this storyline is kind of going towards, because these guys actually have a bit of a story that you can follow. On deploy, boost south by one for every unit in the opposite row. I feel like it's a bit weird. Um, because this basically would fit more into Squire Tell with the movement abilities. But uh, on order, he also gets an ability. You can transfer all the boosts from yourself to an allied unit, which might actually benefit from that better. Uh, there's even one very big unit that can benefit from this the most. But uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So basic ability, but I feel like this would have been better fit for uh, Squire Tell. And now we get the Griffin Witcher himself, the base Witcher, which basically is another Lyrian Arbalest. So on, if he's on the melee row, you get the order ability to damage an enemy unit by one. It has a one cooldown, so you can use this every turn. Um, and on Adrenaline 3, you can actually, well, you get the extra ability. So once you have three cards or less in your, in your hand, at the end of your turn, damage a random enemy unit by three, and then you lock yourself. So you can't use your order ability anymore once you've gone past that, unless of course you purify him once and you can have another three damage. Um, it's a cool card, but I feel like we had plenty of cards in Northern Realms that already did this. Um, it's not charge based, it's cooldown based, but even then, yeah, it feels like a bit of yeah, a bit superfluous. It doesn't really feel like this was something that we needed in Northern Realms. But nevertheless, um, it's still a cool card art. And he's fighting the, the Griffin that the other guy was probably tracking. And then we have the Mentor. So I talked about that before. In the background of the Adept, you could see the Mentor at the bottom. And you can also see that the Adept actually managed to pull the arrow out of the tree that he was trying to get to in the, uh, the other card art. But on deploy, he has five power, but on deploy, he draws the top unit from your hand and then you shuffle a card from your hand back into your deck. Again, something that doesn't really fit Northern Realms. It's something that you would more see in like uh, Skellige or Nilfgaard even. Um, but on Adrenaline 4, if you do that on Adrenaline 4, you boost the unit that you've drawn by two. But there's no way to actually know what the top cards will be. So yeah, the, the synergies here are a bit weird. Um, so I don't really see how you would use this card efficiently. There's other five provision cards that would be better in basically any deck for Northern Realms. So again, They've done some really weird things with uh, Northern Realms in this expansion. Most of the abilities seem like they are handpicked from other factions and don't really fit Northern Realms all that well. 
Um, but we'll see if the other cards actually manage to do better. Because next up, this is way more interesting, Cohen. So the um, if you don't know who Cohen is, Cohen is another one. Because uh, this is weird. Cohen is not supposed to be Northern Realms, I feel like. Because Cohen is a wolf school witcher. So basically from the same school that Geralt, Askel and Lambert uh, are from. Um, and he was even one of their friends, because he was also in Kaer Morhen in the books. And he was basically also one of the witches that trained Ciri. Um, but he, uh, spoiler alert, he actually died over the course of the books, which is why we never get to see him in the games. But, enough lore talk. He has three power, seven provisions, and his ability is very, very cool. So, he has zeal. And its order ability allows you to boost all other units with power equal to Cohen's power by the amount Cohen is boosted. So that means, for example, if you boost Cohen to 5, uh, like for example with Visigota charges you still have left, and you use his order ability, he boosts all other units that also have 5 power by 2, since that's the amount that he's boosted. If you boost them to 6, he boosts all 6 power units by 3, and so on and so forth. So he can be very, very powerful, but he requires a lot of setup. Which, to my mind, is probably the, the best fitting card for Northern Realms. It's really, really cool and allows you to just spread out those boosts in one go. Because if you manage to put the entire board to the same power and manage to get Ko into that same power, this can be very, very devastating for your opponent. And then, of course, we get Care Saren, uh, the location card for the Griffin School. Uh, same thing, Brazilians deploy any of the bronze uh, Griffin School Witches that we just talked about. And on order, you can boost a unit in your deck by three again. A bit weird, of course, there's, there's other uh, cards that can actually pull cards from your deck. Um, so we can synergize with Amphibious Assault or Oneiromancy. But uh, boosting a unit in your deck by three... Yeah, it, it has its uses, but again, it's it's hand and deck boosting. That's more something that Scoia'tael is used to doing. Um, so the synergies are, again, a bit weird. It allows you to boost a unit beforehand, of course. But yeah, I guess we'll have to see how useful this is going to be. It is. It has its uses, but you need to have a tutor to manage to be able to get uh, the most out of this. And then we get another Witcher, Keldar, uh, which basically is your um, Witcher student engine card. So he has four uh, power, one armor. I feel like that's a bit too, well, not enough. Um, but he is a very good engine card. So on um, resupply, he spawns a Witcher student on this row. So resupply only triggers when you play a warfare card. So this is going to happen in the next turn because there's not many warfare cards that actually allow you to be played in the same turn. But on Adrenaline 4, he does the same thing at the end of your turn every time. So if you play Keldar when you have five cards, you basically allow him to spawn a Witcher student every time. Combine that with the Griffin School Adept and you constantly have Witcher students to transform. So that's basically the combo that you're going for with this card. And it kind of fits that same archetype with the uh, the Frigate as well. Um, not that you can transform Frigates into Griffin School students because they're not uh, Adepts, because they're not uh, Witchers. But still, it has that same kind of uh, token spawning archetype that uh, Northern Realms started to get um, since the last expansion, basically. Then the next one is the Arch Griffin. This is, yeah, it's it's a really cool card art. I've used this for the thumbnail as well, but starts at five power and at the end of the round, shuffle this card back to your deck, keeping its boost. So basically if you've boosted this card up to 10, 15, whatever, it will keep that power once you move it back to the deck, which is unique. Um, there's no other cards in the game that actually keep their boosts when they go back into the deck, or even the grave graveyard for that matter. So it is a very cool card that gives you the ultimate carryover ability. So if you manage to boost the griffin in round one, and then keep it somewhere in your deck or in your hand, after that you have a very powerful card that you can just slam on the board um, at the end as well, because it just keeps that power that it had. So uh, yeah, and I think that's also supposed to be the same uh, guy in the foreground there that was uh, tracking the griffin beforehand. So now he actually found, found the arch griffin. So again, a little bit of story in the artwork there. And then our final card is another very strong Witcher, Erland of Larvik. Um, and a very cool ability to that as well. So starts at four power, but on deploy, you boost all units in your deck by one. 
If you do this at Adrenaline 3, so when you have four cards in your hand and you play Erland, he also gains immunity, which is very important for his order ability. Because on order, you remove the boost from all units that are still in your deck and boost this unit by the same amount. So there's a few options you can do. You can play this round one to have the most boosts out of that. Um, or you can... Uh, and you can actually get more cards from your deck with boosts if you don't manage to pull off the order ability. Or you can, of course, use it as the at the end of your uh, of the match. Um, boost all the units that are still in your deck, usually around 8, 9, 10, something like that. And then get those boosts on Ireland as well, giving you yeah a 12, 13, 14 point card uh, in one go. Well, in two goes, because you can't use the order ability immediately, of course. But a very, very cool card that is just a... Um, yeah, it's one of the only really point slammy cards in Northern Realms that just has a big body of its own. Um, which is a nice change of pace. It's, it allows you as Northern Realms to even go just for points instead of doing any sort of fancy engine stuff. Um, but that's all the cards in the Northern Realms section, well, faction for the Way of the Witcher. So to round that out, it's... Yeah, most of the bronzes have really weird abilities, but the gold cards are make that up rather nicely. Um, make up for that rather nicely because they have the most interesting abilities that do kind of synergize with what Northern Realms usually does. But uh, this is not the end of the... Well, it is the end of the video, but it's not the end of the discussion. Let me know what you think of the new cards in Northern Realms in the comment section down below so we can uh, help each other out with any combos that I might have missed because uh, that definitely definitely happened um so one more faction to go well not really a faction tomorrow we'll be talking about the neutral cards that have been added and then after that we have reviewed all the 70 new cards in the way of the witcher expansion you can check out all the other reviews uh over the from the past few days on youtube as well there's a few links right here that you can check out but other than that thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of grand edge for the final card reviews for the way of the witcher thank you very much for watching and uh goodbye